All right, hello everybody. Today I will be detailing a very important piece of tech known as uh, de-icing and anti-icing systems found in aircraft. So let's begin by explaining what icing actually is. Icing is the accumulation of ice on aerodynamic surfaces of the aircraft or in various aircraft components like carburetors and fuel tanks. Uh, it can be three things. It can be rime ice, which is more rough and milky. Uh, it can be clear ice, which is uh, more smooth and clear, or it can be a mix of both. Uh, ice is dangerous uh, to flight because it interrupts the smooth flow of air over the flight surfaces, which increases drag and decreases lift, which obviously is not a good thing when you're trying to fly. Uh, and ice also can cause the engine or instrument to have, or instruments of the aircraft to have issues by blocking the air inlet or carburetor. Uh, it can block the fuel vents, which can create a vapor lock situation, or it can block the pitot-static ports, which will cause issues for your instruments. So there's a difference between de-icing and anti-icing. Uh, De-icing means it's the removal of already accumulated ice from the aircraft. And anti-icing is preventing ice from accumulating on the surfaces or in aircraft systems. So the way these systems are supposed to be used is that they are not supposed to be used for long periods of time. They're only meant to be used uh, if caught in an emergency when you're flying in icing conditions. Uh, if you are in an aircraft certified for flight into known icing conditions, anti-icing systems can be used to prevent ice buildup when flying. Uh, and in the event that ice starts to build up uh, when you are flying, uh, these systems can be used to remove the ice and prevent more buildup of ice as you're flying. So these are all the systems uh, the types of systems that you can find in aircraft to prevent ice buildup. Uh, the systems are electrothermal type systems, uh, windshield systems, which uh, are electrothermal systems mainly, and also uh, uh, TKS or weeping wing type systems. They're not exactly the TKS system. Uh, propeller anti-icing systems, uh, pedo and static tube heat, fuel vent heat, stall warning vane heat, carburetor heat, pneumatic systems, uh, bleed air systems, as I said before, TKS or weeping wing systems, and then passive anti-ice methods. So electrothermal systems are systems that use electrical current in parts of the aircraft to generate heat. So as you can see here, this is the leading edge of a wing and uh, it has a electric heating pad and a wire that goes into it to activate the heat. Uh, they can be used both as de-icing or anti-icing, uh, depending on the specific system. Uh, they're mainly used in propellers in certain general aviation aircraft. Uh, you won't really find uh, general aviation aircraft having uh, electrothermal systems in their aerodynamic surfaces but they can be used in the airframe itself. Uh, and it's more of a good way to prevent uh, ice from building up versus actually uh, de-icing because um, the way these systems work is sometimes they will alternate uh, current so that they're not drawing as much power. So uh, one example of an electrothermal system can be found in windshield anti-icing. Now, there's two types of windshield anti-icing. Uh, there's one system where alcohol is sprayed onto the windshield to prevent ice from forming uh, because the alcohol will not let uh, water droplets bond. And then the other system is the electrothermal system where electric wires are embedded in the windshield uh, that can provide heat from the electrical current running across them. And they prevent ice from forming as well and they can be activated by a switch in the cockpit. Propeller anti-icing, uh, it's mostly the same ideology as the windshield anti-icing method, 
uh, they, they can be either alcohol or electrothermal. Uh, in the alcohol method, uh, the alcohol is discharged from a, a nozzle in the spinner. Uh, this moves outward to the propeller blades. So as you can see on this diagram, uh, from the spinner outward, uh, to the propeller blades. It'll go on the inboard section of the blade first and then move outward. And then the electrical or the electrothermal de-icing cycles between inboard and outboard first. Inboard, then outboard. Uh, it's a dual element system, meaning that uh, when one side of the system is running, the other side is off to prevent the uh, excessive power draw that this system can create. Uh, Dual elements provides lower use of amps. Uh, one second. Uh, to maintain de-icing capability. So uh, for a certain amount of time, the one side of the propeller will be heated and the other side will be off. And then after a certain amount of time, the, the system switches to the inboard and then the outboard and the inboard and outboard. Uh, common de-icing and anti-icing systems that are found in aircraft include pitot-static heat, uh, which is an electrothermal system. It'll be used to uh, prevent ice or remove ice uh, from the pitot and static heads. Uh, fuel vent heat is also an electrical or electrothermal system uh, that prevents buildup of ice and fuel vents. To, uh, that prevent this will prevent the vapor lock from happening. Uh, stall warning vane heat is also an electrothermal system and it removes or prevents build of ice on the stall warning vanes, so they still work. And then carburetor heat is electrothermal as well. Uh, this removes or prevents buildup of ice in the venturi of the carburetor because ice buildup will uh, create a loss of power. So uh, when ice starts to build up, it restricts the airflow through the venturi and you lose power. So the uh, carburetor heat will remove that ice for you. Pneumatic de-icing uh, are these little uh, rubber pieces that are placed on aircraft wings or various aerodynamic surfaces uh, made of rubber boots and air chambers. Uh, and these are rapidly inflated and deflated to break up and remove buildup of ice on the surface. So this is a de-icing method. Uh, as you can see here, the tubes are deflated. It's creating a normal surface. And then when the tubes are inflated, you can see that the, uh, when you, you can see that when uh, they're rapidly inflated and deflated, it will break up the ice on that leading edge of the wing. Uh, these are more commonly found on more general aviation aircraft and some low to medium speed aircraft. They're not usually found on bigger aircraft or jet airliners because uh, they're more hard to implement and less useful as the aircraft uh, aerodynamic surfaces uh, get bigger. Bleed air systems are systems that dispense hot air through aerodynamic surfaces of the aircraft. So as you can see here, this is a, a leading edge of a wing right here. Uh, hot air comes through this piccolo tube uh, from usually on a jet airliner, it'll uh, take the bleed air from the jet uh, turbine and run it through the piccolo tubes along the wings and then it gets exhausted through the, the exhaust holes. Uh, Hot bleed air is brought from the jet engine and routed through the tubes. So uh, as a result of this, you, don't, you can't really create this system on a propeller-driven aircraft, but uh, jet engines obviously have a lot of heat buildup, and uh, this heat can be extracted and sent through to the aerodynamic surfaces of the airplane and warm up those surfaces to prevent uh, ice buildup. So this is actually an anti-icing system. Electromechanical systems are systems that use mechanical force to remove the ice from aerodynamic surfaces. So actuators, as shown here, this is the leading edge of a wing. Actuators are placed under the skin of a surface and then they're activated, uh, which produces a shock wave in the surface of the, uh, uh, <coughs> of the aerodynamic surface. And this shock wave will knock the ice off of the uh, surface itself. Uh, these actually can be used in conjunction with electrothermal systems to both prevent ice buildup and remove ice buildup because heat will prevent the ice from happening in the first place. But if it starts to build up, uh, 
the mechanical system removes the ice by knocking it off the wing. A TK, uh, TKS or weeping wing system is a system that uses glycol based fluid, which is similar to what you find in antifreeze fluids that gets dispensed on the leading edges of aerodynamic surfaces to prevent ice buildup and break up ice through its chemical properties. Uh, holes in the panels along, as you can see here, along the leading edge of the wing, they're very, very, very fine, small holes. Uh, they weep fluid onto the surface, which coats the, the, the surface in this glycol-based uh, fluid. Uh, this fluid is pumped from a reservoir in the aircraft by an electric pump through the airframe to the various surfaces that uh, have the weep holes on it. All right, some passive methods of uh, ice prevention. Uh, this is a method of ice prevention that uses surfaces that resist water uh, called hydrophobic surfaces on the aerodynamic uh, surfaces of the aircraft. Uh, wings and other aerodynamic surfaces can be coated with hydrophobic materials to prevent water from adhering to the surface or to break up water droplets as they land. I like this picture because uh, you can see like uh, the water droplet is not really adhering to the surface of this little leaf. It's actually not bonding to it, it's just rolling along it. Uh, think of like wax on a car. Uh, if you don't wax your car, it, um, it tends to have water stick to it and you can get uh, water spots and stuff like that. But when you apply wax to a car, the water sort of just beads off the car because wax is hydrophobic. And additionally, ridges can be built into the surface of the wing itself or other aerodynamic surfaces to uh, to provide the ability to break water droplets into smaller drops as they land. So as they fall onto the surface and hit these ridges, the water droplets break into smaller drops. And these drops are quicker to bounce off of the uh, surface, which means that there's less time for the water to adhere to the aircraft and become ice. All right, um, so some Piper PA44 specific systems. Uh, the Seminole is equipped uh, with only common heat systems. Uh, these systems include the pitot-static heat to prevent the ice from building up in these ports, uh, carburetor heat to prevent the ice from building up in the venturis of the carburetors and uh, in, you know, resulting in uh, loss of engine power, and then fuel vent heat to prevent the uh, fuel vents from being clogged, which can cause vapor lock, as I've said before. Uh, the Seminole itself is actually not certified for flight into known icing conditions, so that's why it's only uh, equipped with basic uh, anti-icing. Because you can encounter icing, especially in the carburetor, even in uh, normal uh, humid air. So uh, it's actually pretty necessary. It's a pretty handy thing to have to have all these uh, anti-icing uh, systems equipped on the aircraft. All right, that'll be it for my presentation. All of my sources include the article Anti-Ice and DI Systems by Flight Literacy, uh, the article Icing in the Aviation Environment by CFI Notebook, uh, the article Icing Systems by CFI Notebook, the book Aircraft Systems written by David A. Lombardo, uh, the Pilot's Operating Handbook for the N245GT Piper Seminole uh, written by Piper Aircraft, uh, the article Safety Pilot, Ice on the Approach, uh, written by uh, AOPA. And then the article Electromechanical De-Icing, written by Tim Wright. Thank you for watching.